Yes, sir. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. All thanks to the Savior. All thanks to the Savior, man. Um, everything is him. Uh, everything is him. You know, him being the image of the Father. You know, the Lord blessed us with the understanding. So, today I'm going to just bring forth a little video um, about, you know, tribalism to some degree. Tribalism to some degree and uh, the tribe of Gad. I'm going to bring forth some information um, I'm going to go into this that we had from years ago and um, you know this is back early 90s we got this the brothers brought it out and um, you know the spirit is just on me because there's a lot of false teachers out here many false teachers you know teachers is popping up out of the woodwork you know, claiming that they this and they that, and they this and they that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to be the grand muck muck and the grand pooh ball. You know what I'm saying? But nobody's trying to be this, though. Let's go in the book of Luke. Let's go in the book of Luke. This is all I want to be. Luke, the 13th chapter, the 14th chapter. Luke, the 14th chapter, and the 6th verse. And he put forth a parable to those that were bidden. When he marked out, he chose the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest rooms. See that everybody now want to sit in the highest room. Everybody want to prove that they're the best teacher, that they know this and they know that, and they got the way to salvation. So you're sitting in the highest room. So the Savior now is telling you, exactly where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be about that humility. Okay? Everybody now want to contend. Everybody now want to prove their doctrine is correct. He says, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him, and he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, give this man place that thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden to go, go and sit down in the lowest room. So cats ain't sitting down in the lowest room. Cats not sitting down in the lowest room. Where men sitting? Every one of body want to prove that they prince muck muck. They the, they the big high man. Give this man place, and thou beginnest with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. That when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher. See that? So that should be one of your goals in you studying the Bible is to be a friend. That you can be taken to a higher position. Not you broadcasting yourself right now that you know everything better than everybody. You know, your doctrine is correct. That's not what it's about. Okay? You got to be about that humility. Okay? So now, what is this little topic going to be about? It's going to be what, this, what the Savior has shown me down through time that is biblically correct. And what am I talking about? The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay? Let's go into the book of James. Let's go into the book of James. Let's go in the book of James. James, the first chapter, first verse. James, a servant of the Lord and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered aboard, greetings. So he's saying that we now are scattered. So how did we get scattered? This was already prophesied that we would be scattered. Let's go in the book of Luke. Let's go in the book of Luke, the 19th chapter that we would be scattered.
Let's go in the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, and the 20th verse. And when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then shall shall know the desolation thereof is nigh. Let them which is in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart not, and let not them in the countries thereafter, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them with a child, and to them which give suck. And in those days, for they shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon the people. See that? So the people is the twelve tribes. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, the twelve tribes, and be led away captive into all nations. See that? So the tribe of Gad was led away captive into all nations also. Right? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So now what are we talking about? What tribe are we talking about right now? We're going back now. So we show you, okay? We showed you who uh, James is talking about to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So how did Gad now, who is Gad? Let's go back now to find out who's Gad. Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis, the 49th chapter. First, let's find out. Yeah, let's go to Genesis, the 49th chapter. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. See that? Jacob was, all, was back there in, in the past. Now he had his sons, and the sons was going to become tribes. And he was going to tell them what shall befall their descendants in the last days. Okay? So the firstborn son was Reuben. The second, Simeon and Levi. The third, Judah. Okay? The fourth, Zebulon. So one, two, three, four, five, Zebulon. Issachar. Dan. Right? One, two. We in Genesis, the 49th chapter. So you got one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. In Genesis 49, verse 19, we've got Gad. A troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Who is the troop? The U.S. soldiers. They overcame the North American Indians at the last. Okay? So that's where you get F troop, the U.S. cavalry. They overcame us. So see the book? Okay, see the book. So I'm going to pull up from these records, but I'm going to use scriptures. So it says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. So they have overcome the North American Indians. Now, the North American Indians consist of many different tribes. Okay, so if you look at this picture right here, you see that they were li living all up in North America and Central America. These are the tribes of Gad, okay? So you had Mohawk, Seneca, Cayuga. You had Crow, Lakota, Kiowa, Shoshone, Comanche, Pawnee, Nazpez, Apache, Zuni, Hopi, Navajo, Ute, right? You had Blackfoot. You had a longer kin. Cree, Huron, Mohegan, you had Paiute, Shoshone, Mohave, Yaman, Pima, Apache, Chinook, okay, you had Cherokee, you had Creek, you had, these are the names, you had Natchez, these are the names that were given to them, these were the names that were given to them, but how did they get to North America, how did they get to North America, let's stay in the scriptures, Okay, let's go into 2 Kings, the 17th chapter. Now, I'm just running about the tribe of Gad. This is a short, right? This is, this is a short. I'm not going into it too deep. I'm going 2 Kings, the 17th chapter. Right. 
So when you go on the second Kings 17 chapter, it breaks down what happened, right? And in the 20th, 12th year of the Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel in nine years. And he did it which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. And against him came up Shalamansa, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant. So this Israelite man became king, became a slave to a heathen nation, and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he sent messengers to so king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came throughout all the land and came to Samaria and besieged it three years. And in the ninth year of Hosea, king of Assyria took Samaria and carried away Israel into Assyria. Right? And placed them in Halah and in Gabar by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. And so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord, their power, which had brought them out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods and walked in the statutes of the heathen. See that? So we always walk in the wrong way. Okay? And the children of Israel did secretly those things which were not right against the Lord their power, and they built them high places in their cities, from the war tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And, he, and they set them up images and groves in every high place and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried them away before them, and wrote wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they serve idols whereof the Lord had said unto them, You shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against us and against Judah and all the prophets by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like the necks of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their power. See that? So we're still doing the same thing over and over and over. Okay? So what happens? Let's jump to the 23rd verse until the 22nd. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did, and they departed not from them, until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he is said by all his prophets, all his servants, the prophets. So Israel was carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, from Qatar, from Avar, from Amath, from Shepherdim, and placed them in the city of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was in the beginning of their dwelling that they feared not the Lord. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, right? So here is how we got split up into two kingdoms the northern kingdom, and the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The northern kingdom was under Ephraim. Okay? Now, let's jump into the Apocrypha now. Let's jump into the Apocrypha. Let's go into 2nd Ezra, all right? The 14th chapter. Let's see what happens. Second Ezra is the 14th chapter. Actually, Second Ezra is the 13th chapter and the 40th verse. These are the 10 tribes which will carry their prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Shalomansah, see, so see how it's punching back to the Bible, okay? Shalomansah, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried the women away over the waters, and so they came into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, right, and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their statutes, their laws, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. And the Mosai then 
showed signs for them, and they'll still the flood till they were passed over. Okay, for a third of the country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and that same region today is called Arasef. Then they'll they they'll wail there until the latter time, and now they shall begin to come. And the Most High shall stay the springs of the stream again that they may go through. Therefore, so is now the multitude with peace. So the tribes broke apart. Second Kings of 17 chapter. Okay. Ephraim now taking the northern kingdom and then they went on ships. So they came into the land and it took them a year and a half. See that the 45th verse. And a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And this place was called Arasim. Okay, so that's how we came, Second um, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, all the tribes came on ships, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. So the North American Indians now came back to Egypt. The word Egypt means bondage, again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. See that? So they came on ships also. They came into bondage with ships. See that? So, what I want to do with this is, I want to show you with proof, okay, documented archaeological proof that the North American Indians is the tribe of Gad. See? And Thanksgiving is a lie. See that? When you celebrate Thanksgiving and the 4th of July, you are lying. Okay? So a lot of these things are in black and white. Right? I want to give you the preface. It says, nevertheless, the Lord always left a small remnant of Israel as seeds among the nations who he uses to expose the secret mysteries of truth from sources only the Holy Spirit can reveal. Isaiah 1 and 9, Amos 3 and 7, Colossians 1, 26, Deuteronomy 28, 29, 29, Romans 16, Verse 25 and 26. Our noble race once covered this land which was labeled the United States of America. The white man was, as he thought, nowhere to be found. Then they came from this as the scum of Europe. Viruses, pestilences to infect the open wounds of our sin of our body and spread as cancer throughout our tribes. A pervasive mortal man, evil man that remains this day in the residue of our people. We have become foreigners and aliens in our own land and precepts in brackets within the books of prophets and thieves alike. Now, what is he talking about? Let's go in the book of Baruch. Let's go in the book of Baruch and see what is he talking about. Baruch. Third chapter. How happened in Israel that thou art in thine enemy's land? See that? That thou art waxing old. So now the tribe of Gad, the North American Indians, this is their land. And it's like they don't even belong here. It's like they don't even belong here. How happened it that thou art waxing old in a strange country that thou art defiled with the dead? So we as a people... It's like we're dead. We have hatred for each other. It's like we're dead. That thou art defiled with the dead. Thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. So they call you nigger. They call you so many different things. It's like, it's like you're the walking dead. The, the show, the walking dead. You're the walking dead. Thou art forsaken the fountain of wisdom. So he goes, for if you had walked, if all the tribes had walked, in the way of the Lord, thou should have dwelled in peace forever. So look at the hell we in. Look at the hell that we in. So we forsook 
the fountain of life, and now we are in hell. Okay, so let's further read on. The biblical prophets describe the Savior as a Jew, dark brown with hair of wool. Jeremiah 7, 14. Um, Hebrews 7, 14. Jeremiah 14, 2. Revelation 1, 13, 14, 50. Follow these verses. He is a descendant of Jacob who would never become fair faced like the so-called white man Isaiah 29, verse 22. The Christ spoke in his black to his black Jewish disciples, Acts 13, verse 1, about their brothers scattered abroad, whom he must also bring back into the fold of Israel. John 10, 15 and 16, John 33, 35, James 1, 1, Acts 26, 6 and 7, Matthew 15, 24. Okay? Giving you verses. Follow them. The prophets see, speak of the division of the nation of Israel into two kingdoms after King Solomon's death. The tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi call themselves Judah in the south. Okay, remember, kingdom was split into two. While the northern kingdom, the ten northern kingdom tribes, kept the name of Israel and fell into idolatry. Okay, this angered the Lord who caused Shalamansah, king of Syria, to take them into the captivity in 722 B.C. Later migrating across the Atlantic Ocean to North, Central, and South America, 1 Kings 11, 26 to 36, 1 Kings 11, 43. See, so I'm giving you scriptures, okay? 2 Chronicles 11, 1 to 5, 13 and 14, 2 Kings 17 chapter, and 2 Ezra 13, 40 to 45. See that? So now we're giving you scripture with history, okay, about the tribe of Gad. Now, adorned with health symbols, the yard high painting was done in vegetable dyes on doe skin. But what are you going to see right here? You're going to see certain things. You're going to see the menorah, right? Now, this is North American Indians, and you're going to see the symbolism of the shield, what is called the shield of David, okay? So North American Indians put this up. Matter of fact, let me, let me highlight that so you can see. It's going to be an orange, right? And then you're going to see the little menorahs. So, here it is. Look at the shields. You call it Jewish shields. Some people call it the shields of David. Now, North American Indians had this. Good, and now you see the menorahs. This links up to the Bible. Okay? So, there are books, there are movies, and there are scriptures to prove the American Indians are the Israelites. Let's go into some books that you can buy. So, a man by the name of Manasseh ben Israel's book, The Hope of Israel, Indians and Jews, reprinted by Lynn Grazer, giving startling details about the American Indians being the ten lost tribes of Israel. David McRitchie's Ancient and Modern Britons on page 18 mentions the Shawnee Indians celebrating their safe arrival to America from across the Atlantic Ocean. The Philadelphia Daily News on page 16, October 12, 1994, documents William Penn's statement that the American Indians' appearance and speech are Jewish. James Adair, History of the Amer American Indians, proves with overwhelming evidence gathered over 40 years of living with the Indians that they're the descendants of the ancient Jews and Israelites in every way. So these are Caucasians validating about the tribe of Gad. 
Reader's Digest General Books, Mysteries of the Ancient Americas, The World's Last Mysteries and Mysteries of the Past, published by the American Heritage Books, mentions the Mexicans as one of the lost tribes of Israel. We're not talking about the European wannabe Mexicans, the Spaniard conquistadors. We're talking about the indigenous brown-skinned people. That's what the Lord was talking about. Okay? So now, just giving you as you see. Okay? As you see. Now let's go into some more books. Let's go into some more books. You have some guy named uh, Vetan Todorov, The Conquest of, of America. Now I'm going to show you where we get our information from. See all the books? See all the books? You Because the Bible is a historical book, and the Lord is a Lord of knowledge. And you must have understanding. Right. Let's go into Proverbs. Let's go first Samuel. First Samuel. Second chapter. First Samuel, second chapter. Third verse, he says, talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. So what are we giving you? Knowledge. See that? Where do we get this information from? You have to study. That's why in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, it says study to show thyself approved. Okay? Study to show thyself approved. How are you going to know who you're talking about? This is not a book about religion. Okay? Why? Because Proverbs 4 verse 7 says this. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says this. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom. And with all I getting, get understanding. Do you really understand what it is that you're reading from Genesis to Revelation? Why is it that the tribe of Gad, there's going to be 44,000 of the tribe of Gad? The 144,000. 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. Who are these Gadites? Who are they? When your priest is reading this book and you run across this, well, who are these Gadites? Who are they? Where are they? You got to know this stuff. That's why the Savior says this. Let's go into the book of John, the 14th chapter. John, the 14th chapter and the 26th verse. But the comforter, which is the Bible, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things. See that? All things is what? The past. So you got to go back into the past to understand what's going on right now. So when you're reading about the tribe of Gad, you got to go back into the history to know who you're talking about. Because why? Let's go in the book of Job. Let's go in the book of Job. Look what Job says. Job 8. Job 8, verse 7. He says, though your beginning was small, meaning the nation of Israel, okay, yet thy latter end shall be greatly increased because the Lord is going to increase us super tremendously. He says, then he says, for I inquire, Ask, I pray thee, of the former age, which is what's the former age? The past. So you got to go search. 
and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday. See that? We are but of yesterday. You are of your past. And know nothing because our days upon the earth are a shadow. So you got to study, man. Because why? All these records right here, George Kaplan, a white man, dwelt up with the tribes of Sioux, Pawnee, and Comanche from 1830 to 1836. He painted vivid pictures of their garments and customs. He wrote that the horn headdress of chief forebears resembled Old Testament Hebrew regalia. He reports that these Indians believed themselves to be the first people created on earth, and they carried them records of the biblical flood, the fall of Adam and Eve, and the appearance and crucifixion of their Savior. Alexander von Wootenhan's book, America, Christ Saw de la Rezas del Mundo, or in English, America, Crudical of the Races of the World, calls to attention the shield of David used frequently among the elite of the Maya, Toltec, Olmec, and Aztec Indians of Central and South America. Statutes and images of Negroes in Jewish wardrobe were depicted as visitors of royalty amongst them. Search of your fathers. This pamphlet has been with me for over 30 years from when I went to the original school. Okay? I can't get this type of stuff anymore. Bradley Smith's The American Way of Sex strangely mentions the true origin of Thanksgiving on page 55. New Englanders always felt queasy about having Indians around, especially after the frontier wars of the late 1600s when whole, villages, when whole villages were massacred and destroyed. So you celebrating Thanksgiving and 4th of July, you a liar just like them. In 1696, a special day of Thanksgiving to which the Indians were not invited was set aside in Massachusetts. It was to celebrate the return of peaceful times. And the council noted, happy there now remains scarce remains a name of a family of the Indians, but are either slain, captivated, or fled, cap captized. So now they were put on reservations on concentration camps. The Holy Bible prophesied the curse of Thanksgiving, the Calvary troop that overcame the North American Indians, and how the white man coveted fields and boastful songs of his evil acts. Isaiah 65, verse 11 and 2. Let's read that. Let's read that. So everything is there, but you got to know what you're looking for. Isaiah 65. Okay. Isaiah 65, verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servants' sake, that I might not destroy them all. See that? So we as a nation, there are many verses that, say that says the nation was destroyed. But it's destroyed meaning groups here, groups there. But the Lord didn't destroy the entire nation of Israel. Okay? And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, an inheritance of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. And Sharon shall be a field of flocks, and the valley of a choice place of the earth. But ye are they that have forgot, that have forsaken the Lord, that forgot my holy mountain, that prepared a table for that troop, 
and furnish a drink offering unto that number. Therefore I will number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because I have called, and ye did not answer. See that? So our destruction was already numbered in Isaiah. So God was already numbered for destruction when he came over here. See that? In Genesis 49, 1-2, to now let's go to Micah, M-I-C-A-H, the second chapter. Just giving you, man. But will it stay that way forever? Nope. Micah, the second chapter. From one to four. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it's in the power of their hands. So who does that? Who does that? They did that to us. And they covered fields. See that? You covered field, that's something that's not yours. So they came here, they saw us here, and they covered it. They took it. And they take them by violence. Okay? And houses and make and take them away so they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. So this was the North American Indians' heritage, and they came here and they took it. They came and they took it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil from which you shall not remove your necks. Neither shall you go haughtily, for this time is evil. In that day shall one take up a barrel against you and lament with a doleful lamentation, saying, We have utterly spoiled. He have changed a portion of my people. However, he removed it from me. Turning away, he have divided our fields. See that? So the land was given to them, these North, these uh, Caucasian stuff. They coveted the land and they took it. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk. The second chapter in the 12th verse. Woe to him that builded a town with blood and established a city by iniquity. See that? Let's go up at the ninth verse. Woe to him that coveted an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may de be delivered from the power of evil. So they think ain't nothing going to touch them. But how did they set up this country? Evil covetousness, man. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the temple shall answer him. So that is what has happened to us. So these are some of the many books, okay? Some of the many books. These are the scriptures. Okay. We were a proud people, man. Even though this is in black and white, I'm just giving you, right? So, the tribe of, Dan, of Gad, man, is the North American Indians. Just letting you know. And they're going back into the kingdom. Let me just read that. They're going back into the kingdom. And they are taking down this world. Let's go into the book of Isaiah 14, verse 1. Just so y'all know, there's a lot of false teachings I heard this morning. People speaking about all these nations being amongst Israel and ruling with Israel. Who are you going to rule? Who are you going to rule? Yourself? It's not happening. Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Jacob is the father of Israel. 
Israel now is sons, making tribes, and the tribes making one nation. And that name Israel means that you are a prince of peace with the Lord. For the Lord will have Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. See, he's going to gather up who he's pre-chosen and set us back in our own land. And the strangers, which are the other nations, shall be joined unto them. So how are they going to be joined unto us? Let's see. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So now they've been cleaving now, saying that they're the chosen people of the Lord, that they're the Jews, that they're the Roman Catholics. They're, the, they're saying that God got to go through them. And the people shall take them captive. We the Israelites, we're going to take them what? Captives. Whose captives shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. See, possess. This is my cup. I possess it. I own it. I can do with it whatever I want. We shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants. So these nations are going back to become servants. In the land of the Lord, they shall become servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives so captive means a servant or a slave. So we're going to take all these nations and make them captives whose captives we were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. As they oppressed us, we're going to rule over them. And in that day, it shall come to pass that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. See, so we're in a sorrowful place right here. The Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy heart bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So where was all the tribes made to serve this? On the North, Central, South America in the islands. Here we came as servants in bondage back into Egypt again, including the tribe of Gad. So what's going to happen? Let's go up into the book of Revelation to close out. Let's go up in the book of Revelation. Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Matter of fact, let me start. Revelation, verse 7. Revelation, verse 7, verse 4. And I heard the number of them that were sealed. And they were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Wait a minute. Of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Gad. So obviously the Gadites, the North American Indians still exist. Was sealed 12,000. See that? I'm not even going to go any further. Let's go to Revelation. Closing out. The 21st chapter. And let's see what it says. 21st chapter. So he said, I will show thee the bride, 21 verse 9. And I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And showed me the great city, holy Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from the Lord, having the glory of the Lord. And her light was unto a most precious stone, and a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So the tribe of Gad is in there, the North American Indians. So I'm closing up. This was supposed to be a short. This can get very long. Verses, breakdowns, okay? 
just showing you where I get some of my information from. You know, um, these are notes that the brother wrote. I mean, this is intense study. Okay, so we didn't just pour, pour around the Bible. Okay, you have to study to show thyself approved. Why? Let's go to back to Proverbs. Right? Last one, I know. Last one. Let's go back to Proverbs. Twenty-five verse two. It is the glory of the Lord to conceal a thing. See that? So things is hidden. It's not right in front of your face. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. It's not going to be easy, people. You're going to have to see if you believe, if you understand, if you know. What are you studying? Facts. Facts. Peace.